Chapter 4, Creating and Modifying Tables in Design View. I'm going to cover some of the key concepts that you're going to find in the Chapter 4 textbook. Um, everything in Chapter 4 is explained to you very well throughout the projects of the book. Make sure you are doing the projects before attempting the case problems and the assessment. Also, the videos are helpful to watch before you do that, too. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to open the properties table. And after looking at it, I've decided I also would like to have the phone numbers in this table. So to add a field, I simply go to Design View. Now I can add or delete fields in Design View. Right here, I would select the row I want to delete to delete it. I'm going to add phone number. I'm going to keep it as a text field, even though it's mainly numbers. In a phone number, we're going to have the parentheses around the area code, and we're going to have the dash. So I can't put numbers, or it wouldn't allow that. And I'm just going to enter a brief description. Enter your number. Um, the field size is going to be about 14. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter, or I'm going to create an input mask. An input mask to put the parentheses around the area code and the dash after the first three numbers. It'll make it much easier for me in data entry because I could just use my number pad and enter the numbers in. It goes much faster, especially if you're thinking of a table that might have 2,000 different records in it. Um, so to create an input mask, I'm going to click in input mask down here and I'm going to go to the three dots. It's going to prompt me to save the table first. I'm going to save it. And then I get a wizard, which I love wizards. I'm going to use phone number. Notice you can do it for social security to put the dash in there. Zip codes if you have to add the extra four numbers, so on. I'm going to go next. And I'm going to, for my placeholder, since we're putting numbers in there, I'm going to put pound sign to represent placeholder. It really doesn't matter. I want it to look like the one above, so I'm going to check this radio button. I want the parentheses and the dash. And finish. Now, right here, nothing looks different. I'm going to save it and switch to data sheet view where I can enter my data. Now, I'm going to start entering phone numbers. I'm just making stuff up. See how easy that was? I didn't have to put in the brackets. Just enter the numbers. I could go all the way down and do this, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to switch back to design view. I want to show you something else. I could decide to change the placement of this field. Maybe I want it right above address. I just do a simple drag and drop. Now we did input mask. Now I want to show you how to do a lookup wizard. And we're going to pretend um, that, um, let's say this is properties. We're just going to say that we're going to have a choice, okay? For these properties, we're going to say rent or rent to own, okay? So we're just going to say ownership for the field, and I'm going to make it use um, the lookup wizard. The lookup wizard lets us type in a drop down list. You'd see lookup wizard a lot of times with it's male or female. Um, if it's talking about wages, salary, um, hourly, temporarily, we're just going to say rent. Do I rent to this property or? rent to own. We're going to pretend that each of these um, fields, everyone's one of these choices. Next. Yeah, we'll keep ownership for the title and finish. Now when I save it, and again I could um, put in a description, choose from drop down. Because when I go to data sheet view, and yep, I'm going to save it, and I go to ownership, look, I could choose. I don't have to type it in. So if you have something um, that there's a choice, whether it be male or female, or how they're paid, or the month they were born. You know, you could choose to create drop-down lists by doing lookup wizards. Remember, lookup wizards was done in the data type. I chose lookup wizard. Input mask, which was for the phone number, that was done um, down, in, down in the bottom. Also in chapter four, they talk a little bit about some validation rules. It's very clearly put out, put in the text, but validation rules is right here. You would type in like greater than 50 or whatever they ask. But these are where the validation rules and text are. They'll talk about that in Chapter 4 too. Remember, after you complete Chapter 4, you have to do assessments 1, 2, 3, and 4. When you're done, all of those assessments kind of link together to one database. So when you're done, you will be submitting one database um, to me. And this assignment is due next Sunday, so April 22nd. 
Um, we have about two more weeks of access. We'll be testing and getting ready to wrap up the semester. Please don't forget about your PowerPoint. Be thinking about it. Be working about on it. It's worth 100 points. Have a good day.